A new mural by Banksy was found in London. Replace London with many other locations worldwide and you get a common headline about probably the most famous graffiti artist of our time. Their personality remains a mystery, just like many other artists who leave their works on the city streets. And while we still have a chance to find out how they are, we'll never know the names of the first artists who painted on walls because they lived thousands of years ago. You can see some of the earliest graffiti examples in the Cave of Hands in Santa Cruz, Argentina. Scientists have found that the art here was created in several waves between 7,300 before current era and 700 current era. It was done in three distinct styles, each telling a story of different people who walked these very paths ages ago. There are hundreds of vibrant handprints plastered across the cave walls. Cave dwellers used bone-made pipes to create these magnificent silhouettes of their own hands. The artists were true wizards with colors, and they used various mineral pigments to bring their visions to life, from fiery reds and purples made from iron oxides to crisp whites crafted with cowlick. This ancient graffiti ground also has some hunting scenes and portrayals of animals and human life. This artwork was made earlier than the handprints, and its authors were hunter-gatherers. The third style is more stylized and minimalistic. A Viking from Scandinavia left this runic marking in the Hagia Sophia Basilica in then Constantinople, now Istanbul. He carved his name on the white marble, saying something like, Hafdan carved these runes, or Hafdan was here. Millennia later, tourists still leave similar notes around the globe. The first example of modern style graffiti that we know of was found in the ancient city of Ephesus. It shows a handprint that looks like a heart, a footprint, and a number. Graffiti by definition is a form of visual communication that usually involves the unauthorized markings of public space. This visual art as we know it today originated in Philadelphia in the early 1960s. It all started when Daryl McRae, who was 12 at the time, began to tag his nickname Cornbread on the walls of Philadelphia's Youth Development Center, a corrections facility. A few years later, when he roamed the streets freely again, Cornbread started tagging surfaces and walls with his friends. By the end of that decade, the new visual art had reached New York. People went tagging buildings, turning them into their personal canvas. The first graffiti stars used subway cars as their canvas, covering from top to bottom in spray paintings. These artists, or taggers, marked their territory and formed crews to conquer the urban landscape. One of the first of them was Taki 183, a teenager of Greek-American origin who lived in Manhattan. He tagged subway trains, fire hydrants, and lampposts with his nickname. The artist, or as they preferred to be called, writers of the 1970s would add highlights and shadows to the letters to create a 3D effect. They also introduced cartoon-style characters to make their works more unique. One of the most famous artists who worked in that style was Von Bode, an American underground cartoonist and illustrator. As the movement gained momentum, galleries in New York City even started buying graffiti as art. But with fame came trouble. Mayor John Lindsay declared the fight against graffiti, which made it really tricky for artists to leave their imprints. They had to adapt to get their canvases late at night or early in the morning. Some writers even had to get MTA uniforms to get in the subway and go out unnoticed. They also started working in groups to leave someone on the lookout. In the 70s, 80s, and 90s, the subculture took over basically all major cities in the West. One of the reasons it happened was the publication of the book Subway Art by two highly famous New York photographers. It showed the evolution of NYC train art and became sort of a manual for artists worldwide. Graffiti has evolved from being just nicknames on buildings to an art form with different styles. Tag style is still there, but it can also include images, cartoons, objects, and other features, all to help the artist leave their mark in the city. Wild style is more abstract, sometimes with letters so entangled and overlapped that it's nearly impossible to read the message. Then, there's bubble graffiti, which also favors style over text. Pieces of character graffiti are usually large-scale murals. They have a rich palette, 3D elements, and other visual marks. It's hard to create those unnoticed, and in many cases, city officials actually hire artists to make them. 
they draw attention to certain sites in the city and become sites themselves. Some artists prefer to leave their graffiti on stickers that they design beforehand and print on special paper. This is the fastest and easiest method to spread your art all over the place. Then, there's also stencil graffiti. This style lets the artist add finer details and lines because they can plan the image beforehand. Such works of art look the most realistic, and artists often use this style to make visual statements about what's going on in the world. The most famous of them is Banksy. They started out as a freehand graffiti artist in 1993. Several years later, they moved on to stencils to work faster and create a series of images of rats and officers of the law. Their works became famous, but they never uncovered his personality. Later, the artist brought together graffiti installation and performances. At the Crude Oils exhibition in London, they displayed altered replicas of legendary artworks by Claude Monet, Vincent van Gogh, and Edward Hopper, and set loose 200 live rats. Banksy even managed to sneak into the Louvre in Paris and put their own version of Mona Lisa at the museum. Their most famous works are The Little Girl with a Balloon, created in London, and The Flower Thrower. There are many theories about the artist's true identity, from that they live a double life as a leader of a popular band, Massive Attack, to that it's actually a group of artists working in one style. Another famous artist who created graffiti was Keith Haring, he lived only 31 years, but left us with around 10,000 pieces of art. Keith grew up in a small, conservative town in Pennsylvania and was inspired by cartoons and animations ever since he was little. The artist was also interested in semiotics, trying to figure out how things got their names. His goal was to bring art to the people, and he used chalk to draw on old advertisement boards at the subway. Years later, his art was shown at major museums around the world, but curators in America didn't take his work seriously. His last public work became one of the largest murals in Europe. It's called Tutamonda, which translates from Italian as All World. Shepard Ferry, an American contemporary artist and founder of Obey Clothing, started his career in art by placing his drawings on skateboards and t-shirts when he was a teenager. He was inspired by the art of Andy Warhol and Diego Rivera, which is clear from his style. To spread his art, he started placing stickers with it all around his city. The face of a famous wrestler, Andre the Giant, was stuck more than a million times. The debate rages on whether graffiti is a violation of law or a form of artistic expression. Some officials believe that when done with permission, it's pure art. But if it's on someone else's property, it becomes an unlawful no-no. Today's artists can share their works and deliver their important messages much easier than before through social media. Digital graffiti has become a part of modern branding and is used by many companies to connect to younger consumers. So no matter how you feel about it, graffiti has become a big part of our lives.